welcome to the Secrets of Happily Ever After. Today, I want to talk about a topic that comes up a lot in this time of year, and that is how to plan for the holidays so that you can enjoy them without getting overwhelmed and lashing out at your partner, which is very common. I see it all the time. And who are we kidding? I experience this all the time. So in the last few years, I've come up with a few ways to be able to set an intention for the holiday and really enjoy myself in a way that's intentional instead of just flying by the seat of my pants or flying blind and, you know, getting overwhelmed as many of us often do and taking it out on all the people around me that I love. So in this episode, I want to talk about three very specific things that you can do right now to prepare yourself to really be able to enjoy the holidays, show up like the incredible mom, wife, husband, spouse, partner, employee, business owner, whatever your titles, I want you to be able to enjoy this holiday season. And I want you to be able to show up very intentionally. So without further ado, I'll just give you my three tips that I have found really, really help to keep me centered and help me show up in a way that I can really be proud of and enjoy the holiday season. So if you're listening in real time, we are like a week away from Thanksgiving and you Usually once you hit Thanksgiving to the end of the year, it's like a complete blur. And I, I want you to look back with no regrets. So my number one tip for staying centered and happy and joyful during the holidays without getting overwhelmed is to set your intentions. So do this like right now, when you turn off this episode, I want you to start thinking about what is your intention or goal for the holiday season. So normally I will pick something like gratitude or joy. Usually it can be encapsulated in one word. So feel free to use gratitude or joy. Those are two that I've used in the past. So this year I'm going for something even more intentional. And my intention for this holiday season is present. I want to be super present with especially my spouse, but also all of my loved ones this year. And normally what happens when we get busy is we start to multitask. And so no matter what I'm doing around the holidays, I usually have like 200 other things that I'm juggling and thinking about. So when my husband comes home and tells me about his day, I'm often thinking, okay, we need to change the laundry. I need to tell you about what happened with my son at school. I need to make sure that somebody's picking up my daughter. Oh, dang, I need to jot down what so-and-so told me they wanted for Christmas. I need to RSVP to the holiday party, right? It's like somebody's trying to talk to you and your attention is so divided in a hundred different places. So I've noticed that when I get really busy and stressed during the holidays, this is something that often plagues me. And so my word for this year is just presence. I want to be present and give the gift of my presence to whoever is right in front of me. So right before I started recording this podcast, I actually have a really good example of this. My daughter, who would have been at school normally, came home for lunch and was studying for a test. And I was, this is my work time. So I was like busy doing a hundred things. And she came into my office and she's like, mom, will you quiz me on this? And I was like, oh my gosh, here's the opportunity a perfect opportunity I have to practice being present. So I had to decide, I could have either said, no, I'm in the middle of something. I can't do that right now. And then my work would have had my full presence, but I decided, you know what? I can totally help you with that right now. So I had to put my work aside, stop thinking about all the other things that I had was juggling at the moment and give her my full attention. And it felt really, really good. So as we go into the busy holiday time, when we're going to spend time with family and friends and neighbors and loved ones, especially with our spouse and our kids, I want to be able to deliver 
my present. And then I can often like several times during the day, I like to check myself with my intention. That's why I just like it to be one word, not like a phrase or a mantra or anything like that. So in the morning I, you know, get up and I kind of say my prayers. And as I'm getting ready for the day, I think, how can I be really, really present with whatever that I'm doing or whoever I'm with all day long? Right. And then in the middle of the day, especially there's lots of things going on. I can be like, okay, how can I be more present in this moment? I can think presence, presence, presence. That's my intention. How can I be more present right now, even though I'm feeling, you know, lots of stress. And normally if I can get myself into that space, then it's not so stressful and not so overwhelming. Cause I'm like, what is the task I'm working on right now? Who is the person I'm talking to right now? Let me be present with them. Right. And then at night I can kind of go over my day and think, how did I do today being present and how can I improve upon that or, you know, really come through for myself tomorrow being present with the people that I love. So that is setting an intention. It shouldn't take you very long. You know, don't overthink it. I want you to just think about how you want to show up this holiday season and then create the word for yourself. You can put it on a post-it, on your mirror, on your computer, on your blender or your oven, wherever you make dinner, you know, those types of things. But just to remind yourself how do you really want to show up? Again, in the past, I've used words like joyful, grateful. Those are the two that come to mind are really good ones as well. So whatever appeals to you, set your intention. All right. My second tip for staying out of overwhelm and really giving your best and showing up at your best is to plan. Now there's three really good ways that you can plan for the holidays to not get overwhelmed. So I want you to set up a time with your spouse where you can plan the holidays in these three areas. Number one is scheduling. Now there are so many things happening during the holidays, right? You're trying to see your family and their family and, you know, go to all of these different holiday parties. Your kids have things going on. There's sporting events still happening and practices and all of these things. So the first thing I want you to really collaborate with your partner on is the schedule. Now take into consideration, one of you might be totally extroverted and you want to hit all the things while the other one might need some downtime at times. So schedule both of those things. I want you to look at kind of all of the things that are coming up and literally schedule what you want to attend, what you want to attend together, what you can divide and conquer, what you need the whole family's buy-in for, and just make sure that you are not over scheduling. As part of this, I want you to remember to schedule in date nights. Don't stop doing date nights. Even if you're busy, you can incorporate it into the holiday time. Like maybe you plan a date where you go holiday shopping for your kids or your neighbors or extended family or something like that. That's a great date night during the holidays, but just you and your partner, right? And, and try to make it as unstressful as possible. Make your list before you go and plan in some fun, lighter activities while you're, you know, bouncing around doing that holiday shopping on your date night, things like that. So make sure that you're scheduling in the things that are most important. And with that, I would say schedule in time to sit on the couch and drink hot cocoa in front of the fire. Like you, it doesn't have to be a structured activity, plan in some downtime, plan in some time to watch Hallmark movies as a family or whatever, but make sure that you're putting the things that are most important down on the calendar, because otherwise you're going to get to the end of the holiday season and think, oh man, we didn't do half the things that we really love to do together. So that's number one. Number two, I want you to plan financially, your budget. There are so many things to spend money on, especially right after Thanksgiving is Black Friday. And then you go right into holiday shopping and all of the crazy things that there are to spend money on. And I want you to sit down with your spouse and have a really good chat about how you're going to spend your money, what you're going to spend your money on. Come to an understanding beforehand so that there's not huge blowups when somebody went way over budget or you didn't even talk about the budget on the holidays and then you're in debt and you're regretting it and everybody's frustrated and resentful, right? So decide, are you going to spend money on putting up lights? 
how much money are you going to spend on holiday gifts for your children, for your neighbors, for your work friends, for the teachers, all the different, there's all the different places where you can spend money. How much are you going to spend on the holiday party you're throwing? How much are you going to spend on family activities? date nights, those types of things, make sure that you're giving yourself some good guidelines so that you don't end up at the end and just like, oh my gosh, how did we overspend so much? So that's number two. And number three, I want you to have a discussion about traditions that are meaningful to you. Now, here is an example. When my kids were younger, we had a tradition that was super fun called Elf on a Shelf. Many of you have probably heard of this. We have a elf named Buddy who comes out on December 1st and he gets moved all around the house and we do all kinds of really cute, like he would be eating cereal one day and he would be sitting on top of the TV one day and he would make a huge mess one day in the bathroom or whatever. Like he just, he bopped around the house making trouble. Now it was a really, really fun tradition when my kids were young because they always looked forward to when Buddy came out and what kind of mischief was Buddy going to get into. And then, you know, Buddy was always watching over the kids. And so if they were naughty or nice, he would personally deliver their letters to Santa and give them the report like these kids were naughty or nice or whatever. Right. And it was just a really fun tradition when my kids were young. And then it morphed a little bit when I had older kids and younger kids to where my older kids, they didn't believe in Santa or Buddy anymore. And so they would help me with Buddy and it became a little bit of a different tradition. So my older kids would kind of take over the more creative, time-consuming, energy-draining part of that for me. They would move him around when I would forget. And then we got to a point where all of my kids had kind of grown out of this tradition of Buddy. Now, we still have Buddy. Buddy still comes out on December 1st, and he plants himself on the windowsill or on the shelves or somewhere where my kids can see him because he's a great reminder of a meaningful part of the holiday season for us as a family, but it was super duper duper stressful. And my, it's not as meaningful to actually do the buddy comes out and makes a mess and causes mischief all over the house part of it anymore. So are there traditions in your family that are draining your energy, that are not having the same type of impact because maybe your family has changed in age or the things that are important to them or that they appreciate or whatever. And so are you still holding on to traditions that are draining your energy when you could be changing them up or changing the tradition or something like that? So I want you to do like a full audit with your partner. Now, sometimes I talk to couples who they've never even done this before. There are traditions that are meaningful to the husband or traditions that are meaningful to the wife that they just did growing up and they just take for granted that this is how we're going to do it in our family. But maybe your family has changed. Maybe it has different needs and maybe it's really stressing one of you out to try and keep these, all of these traditions going. So I like to call it an audit. I want you to audit your schedule. I want you to audit your finances and I want you to audit your traditions so that you're really maximizing your time and energy during the holidays and not running around trying to fulfill on these traditions that aren't even that meaningful to one of you or both of you, right? So that's number two. I want you to spend a significant amount of time, even book a date night where you're doing this, right? Or a time where you and your spouse can go for a drive or go for a walk or something like that. And really think about brainstorm, talk about these three areas so that you have a plan to not be stressed and overwhelmed when the busyness of the holidays hit. And actually, if you're listening to this right now, you're probably in the thick of it, but make sure before you go any farther that you have made a plan. And then third, I want you to be really mindful of the rituals that keep you sane. So make sure that you're still doing the same morning routine. Make sure that you still have the same exercise routine. Make sure that you're still getting enough sleep, that you're drinking enough water, that you're going on your date nights, that the things that are important to you, like here's an example. I call this a ritual of connection. When life gets really, really busy, it's very easy to start dropping these things that keep us very sane. 
happening. So one of the things that is really connecting something that I started doing a long time ago, because I work at home from my office, my kids come home. I try to get up from my desk and greet them. So whenever they come home from school, I get up and ask them how their day went and kind of mill around in the kitchen. You know, they, they're pretty independent at this point, but if they're getting themselves a snack or something like that, I kind of try to connect with them a little bit when they come in the house. The same goes for my husband. He works outside of the home and he is very involved in different things. And so he's coming and going a lot. And I try to acknowledge him when he comes home or in the house from wherever he's at, even if it's quick, I try to get up from my desk and, you know, give him a hug or give him a smooch or let him know that I'm glad he's home. And if he wants to talk for a second, or if he's in the middle of something, that's fine too. But that's a ritual of connection. That's really important to me and to hopefully to my kids and to my husband, right? But when it's busy and stressful, like during the holidays, that's an easy thing to let go of, to, to, to slip, right? Oh, I'm in the middle, I'm doing holiday cards or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. And so you forget to keep up those rituals of connection. Another example of that is the gym. My husband and I work out every morning at the gym. And I promise you from Thanksgiving till the end of the year, the gym is almost empty. And what is the reason for that? I mean, it's cold outside. It's not like people are working out outside. It's because people are super, super busy and they let other things fill their personal workout time. I talked to so many friends and they're like, oh my gosh, I just don't have time to go to the gym today. Right? So I want you to, in those first two suggestions, the setting intentions and scheduling, I want you to schedule in those important you know, rituals or routines that keep you sane and thinking clearly and not overwhelmed and stressed and taking out that overwhelm and stress on all the people. Now, here's another good suggestion for something to schedule. I have a lot of clients. And one of the first things that happens when people get really busy during the holidays is they stop going to see their coach or their therapist or their hairdresser or whatever that is, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm too busy. I don't have time to schedule that, right? So before the hustle and the bustle of the holidays, I want you to make those important appointments and keep them because what happens is everybody cancels. And then right when the holidays are over, everybody's trying to like make emergency appointments like, oh my gosh, we're so stressed. We've been fighting for three days and you know, we need to come see you. Right. So make sure that you're, you're booking those appointments and then you're keeping them even during the busiest seasons. All right. So let's recap real quick. My three suggestions for keeping you out of overwhelm and stress and showing up in a really great way for yourself and for your loved ones. This holiday season is number one, set an intention, just one word to help you kind of show up in a way that you can feel really good about during the holiday season. Number two, I want you to plan. I want you to plan for your scheduling. I want you to plan for your budgeting. And I want you to plan for your traditions so that you are getting everything in the holidays and you're not looking back and thinking, oh man, with all of this regret because you didn't sit down to plan for the busy time ahead of time. And number three, I want you to literally pull out your calendar and I want you to write down and write in the things that are most important, especially your rituals and routines that often get dropped when things get really busy and crazy. So thank you guys so much for listening. I will not take up any more of your time because I know it is precious. I know you're running around trying to make everybody's holiday dreams come true. And I want to let you know, I am here for it. It is so important. This is such a magical time of year, but it also can be so stressful. So I hope that you will take a minute, no matter what you're doing. And I want you to think about these three things, get them done so that you can take some breaths, relax, be present and grateful and joyful and enjoy the time and the people and the season that you are so blessed to have. All right. We will see you next week. Same time, same place. And until then, happy marriaging. To learn more ways to deepen your intimacy and strengthen your relationship, make sure you watch this video next.